Hey, boys and girls, uh, we are going to talk about cross simplifying fractions today. OK, now this is a, a pretty important technique when it comes to multiplying fractions, because essentially what you're doing is you're taking the um, simplifying at the end. When you have this big, huge fraction, you're taking that out of the way. OK, and you're you're essentially creating less work for yourself, right? So let's go ahead and get started. Say I am multiplying 3 over 8 times 7 over 9, okay? And if I were to multiply these two fractions together, I'd say it's 3 times 7 is 21, 8 times 9 is 72, and then I got to think to myself, wow, I got 21 and 72. Do I, how do I simplify that? Well, I got to list all the factors of 21. I got to list all the factors of 72 and I may or may not get it right. But I'm just going to start with three because I have a good feeling that they're both divisible by three. 21 divided by three equals seven and then 72 divided by three. I don't know. I may not know that right off the top of my head. 72 divided by three. Three will go into seven two times. That's six. I subtract. That's one. That's 12. So that's four. So 24. Duh, I should have known that. All right, so the simplified fraction is 7 24 Now, there's an easier way to do it, so I don't have to deal with these big numbers. All right, and that's what I want to show you today. Um, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to say 3 over 8 times 7 over 9. Now, I can simplify, just like I simplified the numerator here with the denominator here, I can simplify the numerator from one fraction with the denominator out of another fraction, only when I'm multiplying, okay? Only when I'm multiplying. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, I would look at this fraction here, or this, not this fraction, but this numerator and this denominator. And I would say to myself, okay, can I simplify three and nine? So I can list the factors of each of them, say, oops, that's not what I wanna do. That's not what I want to do. Say three, the factors of three are one and three. The factors of nine are one, three, and nine. So do they have something in common? Yeah, they got three in common. So I can divide both of these by three. <clears throat> All right, and then I can probably just rewrite it. So three divided by three is one over eight times seven over nine divided by three is three. Okay, so I hope you see what I did here. I... This is the answer, and this is the answer to this division problem and this division problem. Okay, now I just multiply. All right, 1 times 7 is 7. 8 times 3 is 24. Looky, looky, I got the same answer that I got right there. Okay, so this is just, and it's, it's easier to work with 3 and 9 than it is to work with 21 and 72. OK, so th this is just an easier way, a much easier way to solve multiplying fractions. All right. Let's look at a couple more examples real quick. And using a different app here, this doesn't divide or doesn't uh, whatever erases fast. All right. So I'm trying to make this quick, guys. I apologize. OK, let's look at uh, another example. I have. 7 over 8 times 2 over 5. Okay, so I got to look. I can't, I can't simplify 7 eighths. Okay, I can't simplify 7 over 8. And I can't simplify 2 over 5. So I got to figure, can I simplify the 7 with the 5? Or can I simplify the 2 with the 8? Well, 7 is prime and so is 5. So the only thing they have in common is 1. That's not going to help me. But 2 is even, and so is 8. So guess what? I can divide 8 by 2. All right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide the 2 by 2, and I'm going to divide the 8 by 2. Now, you got to do both. you got to divide the, the, the numerator and the denominator that you're working with by the same number. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this. 7 over what's 8 divided by 2, but 4 times 2 divided by 2 is 1 over 5. And then I just multiply. 7 times 1 is 7. 4 times 5 is 20. And guess what? My answer is already simplified. I don't have to fool with it anymore. Okay? Dividing 8 and 2 is a whole lot easier than potentially dividing 14 by 40. You see what I'm saying? 
So anyway, let's look at another example, and I'll let this one go. I got 9 over 24 times 6 over 90. Okay, so you might look at this right off and say, ooh, look, Mr. Bell, I can, I can divide 9 and 90. Okay, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to take 9 and 90, and we're going to divide it by the same number. The question is, which number goes into both of them. What's the biggest number that goes into both of them? We're using greatest common factor here. Well, they both can be, yeah, shoot, they both can be divided by 9. Okay, but wait, don't stop there because 6 and 24 both have a common factor that we can divide by. All right, they both have a common factor we can divide by. Guess good, it's 6. Okay, so you can, you can do this more than once. All right, so let's rewrite this after we simplify it. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 24 divided by 6 is 4 times 6 divided by 6 is 1. 90 divided by 9 is 10. Now, just, just for, for giggles here, I'm just going to let you know that you cannot simplify that 4 with that 10. Okay, we can't divide those by, by 2. And, and we can't do that because they're both denominators. It has to be a numerator with the denominator. Now we just multiply. One, and then the tops and the bottoms. So one times one is one. Four times 10 is 40. That's my final answer, and it's simplified, okay? Can't get any easier than that, okay? I encourage you to use that every time you're mul multiplying fractions.